good Friday morning. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I am so glad to be a part of your day today, and I'm so glad to have you in my life today. I just wanted to let you know that. <clears throat> today is a very special day here in D.C. Today and tomorrow, it is the beginning of what they are calling the return. The return, and it is the return to Christ. It is the return to prayer. It is a return to revival. It is a return to all things that we should be having in our lives. And that starts tonight downtown on the mall. Um, Steve and I will not be going down there, but we will be watching, of course, live. That's one of the reasons I'm telling you this, besides the fact that I'm super excited about it. But uh, tonight from 6 to 9 o'clock, you can log into the, uh, the return. You need to find that, uh, have a log on to that on Facebook or on YouTube or other devices. NCG Live will not have it, but you can watch on Facebook. It's The Return with Jonathan Kahn. And uh, tonight, I know one section of the prayer will be led by Doug Small. He is a Church of God uh, pastor and a very powerful, powerful, powerful prayer warrior. And so Doug Small... And so tonight, we will not have Friday Night Live prayer uh, from the National Church, but we will be joining um, them downtown during that time of prayer. So tonight, from 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock, that's Eastern Time, uh, join us for the return. And then tomorrow, it starts at 9 o'clock in the morning. I know a lot of people are going to be down on the mall joining that in person. And um, maybe you're one of those. And so, um, but we will be joining by Facebook and by uh, uh, the live stream. And so <clears throat> be sure and follow that event. It's called The Return. I will be having Bible study in the morning. I will be having Bible study in the morning from 10 to 11. But if there's something really great going on at that time down on the mall, then just watch the Bible study later. And so uh, I just wanted to let you know, and I'm going to be sending out reminders all during the day that tonight, Friday Night Live, we will not have because we will be joining The Return, which is down on the D.C. Mall tonight. I wonder why they call it The Mall. I need to look that up. And uh, it's with Jonathan Kahn. And I think think we're just going to be blessed. So many of you, so many of us have read his books, Harbinger, and now Harbinger 2 is out. And Shellan Breathwaite is blessing me with one of his other books. And so uh, uh, I'm going to be reading that just the minute it arrives here at my house. So thank you so much, Shellan. She really knows what, uh, what I love. And, um, oh, I love her. And so uh, today... We're going to be looking at Psalm 81, Psalm 81, and it's perfect timing for us to be looking at this because Psalm 81 is talking about when God is telling the children of Israel to come together for a time of celebration, for to come together for a time of praise, and it's in September. It would have been uh, during the season of the new moon, and don't get all... Um, New Age Onus, that would be a, a Jewish holiday where they would come together and they would praise God and they would come into his presence with joy and thanksgiving. So isn't that perfect that we are doing that here in the month of September and at this time when this thing is going on um, downtown D.C. and perfect timing for thousands and thousands of Christians to be gathering in D.C., gathering by uh, television, gathering by our cell phones, gathering by our iPads, gathering by computers to join and to pray and to have this time of reconciliation, this time of return to God. What a perfect time right here before these elections come up. Uh, I just would love to see the airways just filled with filled to capacity with uh, images 
of Christians praying and testimonies and live praise and worship. Wouldn't that be so much better than any of these uh, political ads? And let me tell you, it's just going to get worse. I know that. Uh, I'm already just having to turn my television off. I vote. Listen, I vote. And I know um, what I believe in and and who I think can best uh, provide that, but uh, as far as needing to be watching every single thing they do, uh, -uh I don't, I don't need to know every minute. I don't know. I, and, and you know, if you're watching the news, I mean, literally, <clears throat> you could do that 24/7. You could just sit there and do it 24/7. But instead, I think we're just going to take this time to praise God and to come in alignment with God and to come into reconciliation with God. So today we're going to look at Psalm 81 and get your cup of coffee ready, get your notebook ready. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this opportunity to once again come into your presence. Lord, I thank you for this timing that you have brought this celebration of joy, this celebration of prayer into the nation's capital. Lord, I thank you that people will never look at it as a political event, but Lord, that they will look at it as a time to come to you, a time to return to you, a time to return to our faith, a time to return to God's word, a time to return to revival in our country. Father, I thank you today, and I bless your holy name. In Christ's name, amen, amen, amen. Hans, stop. All right, so uh, we're going to look at Psalm 81, and this is um, this is a song of Asaph. Are you ready? All right, so it starts with, Sing for joy to God our strength. Shout aloud the God of Jacob. Sing for joy to God our strength. Shout aloud to the God of Jacob. So we're not talking this morning about a... We're not talking about that kind of a song. No, no, no. We are not talking about that kind of a song. We are not talking about uh, coming in. We're not talking about that. Sometimes that is the most appropriate thing you can do, honestly. Not whatever it was I was singing. But sometimes we come in and we need to be soft and we need to be in his presence and we need to be at peace and we need to be quiet. But this is talking about not that kind of a day. This is talking about shout for joy to God our strength. Shout aloud to the God of Jacob. Just shout and shout and sing and shout and sing and sing at the top of your lungs and shout and dance and rejoice and to praise him and to come into his presence. You know, um, we were having a service one time this several years ago and our young people we're just shouting and praising and running back and forth across the front of our stage. And up on the stage, we had people shouting and singing and praising. And, and there were tambourines and there were people, uh, you know, with banners. Because uh, we have all of that national and, and, um, and, and our uh, musicians were, were playing on the instruments. And it was glorious. And somebody turned to one of our uh, ladies there in the audience, and she said, uh, I just don't think it takes all that to praise God. And the woman turned and said, maybe not. But oh my goodness, I think God loves it when we are in the middle of his presence and when he shines on us and when it pours out on us and when we are shouting and we are singing and we are praising. And, it's, and then it goes on to say, sound the ram's horn at the new moon. And when the moon is full on the day of our feast. Now, I'm going to just tell you, uh, my intention was to get Steve's saxophone out and, uh, and, and play on that horn. And here's the problem. I cannot get it to make a sound, not a sound. So maybe tomorrow, Steve will <coughs> come down and just play a long blast <coughs> on that saxophone. 
How good is our God? How great is our God? And let me tell you, when something exciting is happening in my life, I cannot help but get excited. A few months ago, before all of this COVID happened, uh, we were having, getting ready to have an event, getting ready to have an event at our church. And I was back in the fireside room with some of our ladies and um, we were trying to figure out how to do a particular thing. I think it was how to serve some little cakes that we had. And um, uh, we were super busy and everybody was just going, 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 trying to get everything set up and trying to get everything just right. And, um, and I, then I was like, oh, and I ran over and I was clapping my hands. And I said, I have a great idea. I have a great idea. And they all started laughing. And I said, oh, <laughs> way over the top. I said, I, I don't ever have caffeine in me, but it kind of felt like that. That's what God is talking about here. He's saying, play the ram's horn, run and dance and shout. It says, not just because I, I think it would be a good idea. It says, this is a decree. This is a decree for Israel. This is an ordinance. He established it as a statute. When he went out against Egypt, when we heard a language we didn't even understand, when we heard a voice. So this is God saying, I'm, I'm not just saying I would like occasionally for you to shout and sing and rejoice and praise him. This is God saying, this is what I want you to do. And it's a decree and it's a, it's, it's huge. It's huge in my life. Now, you know, um, I was a preschool and an elementary school teacher for a long time. I mean, I've done through college now, but um, I, I love the little ones because when, when we would talk about this particular verse in, in our lower classes, you know, of course, uh, we didn't give them tambourines. And um, so this, so um, we would get these bowls and I had lima beans this morning and I was thinking about, you know, I, and I know this looks goofy and I know some of you are like, I am a grown up. And so, you know, good for you. I appreciate that in you. You know, I honor you for being a grown up. So, but I was thinking, I'm going to take, uh, I'm gonna take my uh, bowls, the Ziploc bowls that I bought and, uh, and I filled them with my leftover lima beans that eventually I'm going to put out there in uh, some dirt and see what happens. <clears throat> but I was thinking this morning as I was listening to Bethel music when it's talking about, I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. And I was thinking, you know, I can keep time and I can sing and uh, my dance looks kind of weird. But I'm going to tell you the truth. It looked weird before I had hip surgery, so who cares? Steve certainly doesn't care. And so... And I know God doesn't care because he's talking about just raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I'm going to raise a hallelujah. I'm going to shout out here, out here on my back porch. I'm going to sing. I'm going to dance here in my house. Because let me tell you this. If I'm in a, a grocery store, and I don't remember where I was the other day, but they were playing Christian music. And it took me a minute to realize, hey, that's Christian music. Where was I? Because they were playing Christian music. And I was just kind of like, Whoa, they're playing Christian music in here. And so it wasn't a Hobby Lobby because we don't have one. And so um, um, I was in there and I was just, of course, you know, I have on a mask. I was just singing to that music at the top of my lungs. And, you know, I'm, I'm moving through the store pretty quickly. Where was I? That's going to make me crazy until I figure out where I was. But... As I was going through that store and I was listening to that music and I was singing behind that mask, or maybe I'm out here on the back porch, God wants us to sing and he wants us to dance and he wants us to gather together. Now, right now, we're having to be careful how we gather together. Right now, we're using good wisdom. We, God gave us a sound mind. That doesn't mean that we can't come together like this, that we can't come tomorrow morning tomorrow morning, Saturday, Sunday morning, when we gather together in the church, and I see you all on Zoom, and, and I see some of you waving banners and dancing there in your home, and you're standing up, and you're praising God. However, God gives us the opportunity to gather together. However, you feel led to sing, to dance, to praise, 
That's what you need to do. That's what we need to do. Then listen to what happens. He says, I removed the burden from their shoulders. Their hands were set <clears throat> free from the basket. So free. So he's, he set them free. He gave them liberty. He gave you liberty. He gave me liberty. It says, in your distress, you called. This is God talking. In your distress, you called and I answered you. I rescued you. I answered you from, isn't that a beautiful phrase? The NIV says the thundercloud, but other things say secret place of thunder. I answered you out of a thundercloud. So so here's here's the thundercloud, or here's this secret place, and God's answering, and God's rescuing, and God's calling. Then he's reminding them, hear, O oh my people, and I will warn you, if, if you would just listen, if you would just listen, all of this praise is supposed to be going on. We're supposed to be praising him because we're grateful, but he's having to remind us, if you would just listen, just listen, I answered you, I I called on you, I tested you, or I trained you at the waters. Isn't that an awesome thought that God is training us for what we need to do? God is testing us. He's training us. He's showing us what we're supposed to be doing, how we're supposed to be doing it. You shall have no foreign God before you, and you shall not bow down to an alien God. I am blown away by all the different ways people find to bow down to some other God, to worship some other God, to bow down, to, to fall into this trap of, I'm, oh, I'm going to worship that. Uh, or, you know, sometimes when you go into a shop and they've got these little statues and they've got uh, food sitting in front of them and they've got coins sitting in front of them, what on earth? What on earth? Only God, only your God can rescue you. Only your God is the true God. So we are to never, never, never bow before anything. Now, some of you might be saying, well, uh, you know, some people, they worship birds or, or they worship statues. Well, let me remind you that, that that was made by man. Somebody made that. Somebody made that. And Andre uh, created it. And then somebody made it. And how foolish would I be to believe that I could bow down to that, that I could pray to that. It can't do anything. There's no power there. There's no authority there. That's, I mean, it's beautiful. That's why I have it here on my table, but it can't do anything for me. Can you imagine me going this morning to those two birds and saying, oh, okay, birds, um, you have, um, you need to help me out of this situation. What? I felt stupid just saying that. God is saying, in your distress, you called and I rescued you. I answered you from a thundercloud. And yet, I'm reminding you, don't have any foreign gods among you. And don't bow down. I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God, who brought you up out of Egypt. And then he says, and I love this. We're going to use this the next time I, I do a cooking thing. Open wide your mouth and I will fill it. Think of the mother bird coming in. I'm kind of into birds today. Think of the mother bird coming in and bringing that food in. And those little birds have their mouths open, have their mouths open. I mean, they're just waiting, 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 waiting. And they have their mouths open. Or, or think of a, a little baby that's wanting to nurse. And think of the mother you know, a giving uh, that baby that nourishment and, and the baby has its mouth open. But God is saying, if you will, if you will open your mouth, it's, I'm anxious to feed you. I want to give you provision, but your mouth has to be open to receive it. Have you ever tried to give somebody something to eat and they would not open their mouths? If you haven't, then you didn't, you've never had a, a two-year-old, you've never had a dog, or you've never had a husband. Because you're trying to show them something, or you're trying to give them something to eat, and they're just keeping their mouth closed, and they're saying, no, mm -mm 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 -mm. 
and there's no way. I've been trying to give my dog this peel thing. And uh, yes, I bought the little pillow, peel, pillow things, and it will not. And I got so frustrated the other morning. I was like, Prying, trying to pry his mouth open to put that pill in there. And once I got it in there, it would take his tongue and flick it back out. I got so frustrated. So frustrated. How God must feel frustrated with us. He's trying to give us provision. He's trying to give us life eternal. He's trying to give us blessings. And we're standing there with our mouths closed and our arms crossed and saying, mm, mm, mm. How foolish we are. How foolish we are. But my people would not listen to me. Israel would not submit to me. God was ready to provide, but they didn't want to receive it. Since so I gave them over to their stubborn hearts. I took just follow their own devices. I mean, that's, God was like, I've, I've tried and tried and tried to open your mouth. I've done all these miraculous things right in front of you. I've done all of these things in your life. I've tried to give you blessing. I've tried, tried, and tried, but maybe it didn't look like exactly what you thought it was going to look like. Maybe it looked like something that you didn't understand, or maybe it looked like something that you've tried before in the past and it didn't work, or maybe it just looked like something that looked like it was going to be a lot of work. If my people would just listen to me, if Israel would just follow me, how quickly would I subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their foes? Those who hate the Lord would cringe before him and their punishment would last forever. You would be fed with the finest of wheat. I mean, just think of, just think of the finest, finest loaf of bread you've ever seen in your life. Think of Dion's biscuits or Janet Rocky Moore Murray's bread or Dion's bread. Just think of the finest you've ever had. And then think about standing there and saying, no, no, too many strings attached. No, you have to. You have to follow his decrees. You have to follow his instructions. It says, with honey from the rock. I wonder if that's rocky more. With honey from the rock, I would satisfy you. If only. If only. If only. We're in a dry and desert land. And... And we're praying for blessing and we're praying for water and we're praying for rain and we're praying for abundance and we're praying for provision. But we've got our hands closed because we think it's supposed to look like money. Or we think it's supposed to look like a new house. Or we think it's supposed to look like a new car. And God's saying, if you would just open your hands and receive what I have for you, because as Beverly Mason so beautifully sings, what God has for you, it is for you. What God has for me, it is for me. Stop looking at material things and thinking, that's what I want. That's what I need. I don't understand why God doesn't give me that. I don't understand why God doesn't give me this. I don't understand why God doesn't do that. And all the time, God is saying, will you bless me? Will you trust me? Will you open your heart? Will you open your mouth? Will you come before me with dancing? Will you sound on the tambourine? Will you blow the trumpet? Will you come in dancing before me? Will you rejoice? Will you trust me? Will you lay down all these other things that you're trusting in? And will you trust in me? Because if you will... I'll give you the best fresh bread and honey sandwich you've ever had. Not just today, but you can have that for dinner too. And all day tomorrow. And by the way, while, that, while you're eating that, I'm going to be supplying that to your family. I'm going to be supplying that to those around you. I'm going to be supplying your every need. If you would just trust me. If you would not be rebellious, if you would not say no, if you would not turn to other things to supply your needs. 
Your husband cannot supply your needs. Your wife cannot supply your needs. Yeah, there are things that we do in our life that we do to provide for our husband and provide for our wives. But there are things in our life that, and we know only God can do that. Why can't my husband make me happy? Not his job. Why can't my boss satisfy my need for material things? Not his job. Not his job. Not her job. I, I, need, I need a constant reminder that I am a good person. I need a constant source of encouragement. And, and I, just, I just don't get that from my sister. Not her job. Not your brother's job. Although yesterday, yesterday, Sally was in the middle of a funeral I was in the middle, of the, the middle of a situation here at my house that honestly felt like a sucker punch. I, I mean, somebody called. It just takes one phone call about a situation. And, and so Sally, uh, I was texting with Sally, and um, uh, she and I were texting back and forth. And uh, we got down. Steve and I went to Kentucky Fried Chicken yesterday. And uh, I got a chicken pot pie because they have the best chicken pot pies at Kentucky Fried Chicken. So uh, Sally said something about she was starting to get hungry and she had just left the funeral. And so I sent her a picture of my Kentucky Fried Chicken bag. And uh, Steve said, you need to stop that. Be nice to your sister. Because Sally was like, I'm so starved. I kind of wish I had some chicken. And so I sent her a picture of a Kentucky Fried Chicken bag sitting in my lap and Steve was like you need to stop that and so we're texting back and forth and then Sally sent me and and I, I'm not gonna say it because it's gonna sound like I'm bragging because oh my gosh somebody told her a compliment about me that was just like what and and so she, so she sent me that and then she immediately sent me, I love their coleslaw. And I and I came back with talking about Kentucky fried chicken and I came back with what wait what did he say? Tell me again what he said. And so she sent back what he said and then something he said about me and Steve. And then I was just like, what? I, I'm, I mean, for the rest of the day, I tried to think of a way that I could tell everybody in the world what that person said because it's a really nice compliment. It's a really encouraging word. And I'm going to just tell you this. God will, will send people God will use people to encourage us, to encourage us. And then last night when I opened up this word and I started reading and I was thinking that, that is how God satisfies you. If you're open, if you're available, God will send in things to just satisfy your soul. Now, did that mean that terrible situation went away? No. No, but it did remind me, you know what? God's in control of this. God's been in control of my life since I was six years old. And I'm old. So it's been a long time. God is in control. And when God is in control and when you're open to allow him to use you, when you're open to praise him, when you are available to sing before him, when you come into his presence with adoration and with love, when you allow the Holy Spirit to move through you, when you open your hands, when you open your mouth, when you open your heart, when you open your spirit, it says, I will come in there like honey and satisfy. And let me tell you something about honey. Do you know it never goes bad? Honey never goes bad. Mm -mm. It never goes bad. And there's something about honey that really does. It just satisfies. And it's full, full of nutrients. I mean, it's good for your hair. It's good for your skin. It's not that good for your waist. But, you know, it is, it is so good. And you mix honey with anything, and it makes it better. You put honey on a big old piece of homemade hot bread, and it's so good, and it satisfies. That means you're not sitting there thinking, mm, I need something else. 
I know I just ate half a loaf of bread with, you know, a jar of honey and honeycomb. My mother and daddy used to sit at this very table where I'm sitting, and they had a bowl that they kept honey in and a little honey dipper thing on it all the time. And my daddy, maybe mama too, but I know daddy did. Daddy would eat toast and jelly every morning, toast and jelly every morning, every morning, toast and jelly and honey. Every morning. Every morning. Good looking little man. Good looking guy. Honey satisfies. God satisfies. God satisfies. I don't know what you need today. <clears throat> I don't know what you need today. I needed encouragement yesterday. And God just did it. He just did it. There are things that are part of our lives that just seem insurmountable right now. If we would just open our hearts, open our souls, open our spirits. Perfect timing because tonight, this city, this city that I live in is going to be flooded with prayer warriors. Prayer warriors warriors people who are coming against the kingdom of evil people who are not here to show off new outfits they're not promoting a new album they're not some big celebrity these are people who are bringing god and the holy spirit and jesus christ into dc literally into this city. Literally, God's kingdom is marching into the city of D.C. tonight. From 6 to 9, live prayer tonight. It's called The Return. So find it. Uh, maybe somebody um, maybe somebody has already said that maybe somebody has already posted that i'm not sure but it's called the return by jonathan khan uh you can go down on the mall be sure and wear a mask be sure and wear a mask be sure and wear a mask i'm gonna say it one more time be sure and wear a mask get down there if you can if you cannot if you want to stay home like i'm going to then watch it watch it find out how to watch it it's going to be a powerful time. Franklin Graham is going to be a part of it. I probably should have lived with Franklin Graham instead of Doug Small, but Doug Small is a good friend of mine. I, <clears throat> so uh, be sure and watch it. And then tomorrow morning, it starts at 9 o'clock in the morning, and it goes till 9 o'clock tomorrow night. It is going to be a time of prayer, a time of return, a time of revival. You do not want to miss one minute of that. I am going to come on for a brief devotion and do communion tomorrow at 10 o'clock. And then I will be returning to watching the return. And then Sunday morning, I cannot imagine what the overflow, what the outpouring is going to be like in all of our services. Oh, Terry says they use honey on a wound and wrap it. And they still do that in the emergency room. Honey is good for a dry throat. Yes. So I'm getting ready to have some... Um, Put some honey in my tea. And then it says, what else? Oh, Sally said toast and jelly burnt. Yeah, Dad, Dad burned the toast. I mean, he just, whoa, he could burn some bread. But he, he usually ate it anyway. Um, Sally said, I wish I was going to be there. I just wish you were close to me, Sally. So um, join them tonight, the return. Uh, and then... Uh, if you have trouble getting on, if you want to text me, I am not sure that I can help you, but uh, maybe maybe I could, but it's The Return with Jonathan Kahn, C-A-H-N, uh, the writer of The Harbinger and Harbinger 2. And I, let, me, let me tell you the other book real quick because it is such a good book and I, I forgot the name of it. Oh, The Book of Mysteries. The Book of Mysteries by Jonathan Kahn. C-A-H-N, Jonathan Kahn. All right, God bless you. I love you so much, Father. 
Help us to open our minds and our hearts and our mouths and our hands today. Let us be willing to receive everything you have for us. Cause us to turn away from anything that would separate us from us and the outpouring of your love. Lord, we pray that you would pour over us that honey that satisfies. In Christ's name, amen, 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 amen. Uh, Dion, if you feel led, you know, to send some bread over, that'd be awesome. God bless you. Bye-bye.